My water absolutely stinks. It smells just like rotten eggs every time I run it. I guess this could be sulfur. What's the best option to get rid of this? Well, if you have hydrogen sulfide in your water, you're pretty sure you've got it because you can smell it. You know, it's usually not a health risk, but it might limit how many friends are going to come over and visit you. And of course, you know, there's a simple solution to solve this problem. You can have a set of clothespins at the front door. Everybody puts a clothespin over their nose when they come into your house and it solves the problem. But if that's unacceptable, then we have better ways of removing hydrogen sulfide. First of all, if you have hydrogen sulfide in your water, we need a good detailed water test from a US EPA approved laboratory. Now, we just don't need to know how much sulfur or hydrogen sulfide's in your water, but we also need to know how much iron's in your water, what the pH is, is there manganese, what the level of alkalinity, what the TDS, what the hardness, there's a lot of other things that are very important in determining how we're going to treat that water and what methods we're going to use to treat that water. Now, the laboratory is going to test for a number of things, but they're not going to be able to test for sulfur. We have a little sulfur stick that looks like a oral thermometer, the old style thermometers, and you're simply just going to break the ends off and put them in a glass of water for about five minutes in a glass of your tap water that's freshly drawn and it's going to turn color starting at the bottom and after about five minutes you're going to be able to look at that sulfur stick and it'll tell you exactly the level of sulfur that you have. Now one, uh, two other things that are important to do we need to determine if you have what's called SRB or IRB. SRB is sulfur reducing bacteria IRB is iron reducing bacteria and don't just assume that because you have sulfur and rotten egg smell that you can't have IRB too. So we have this test, there's two little vials, you, you fill up with water and maybe you put it on top of your refrigerator out of the direct light. It's going to take seven to ten days to sit and you're going to be able to watch this culture grow inside if there's any iron reducing bacteria or sulfur reducing bacteria. It's important to do. Uh, to determine if you do have any of that or not because that's going to affect how we're going to treat that system. Now, what's the best way to treat sulfur rotten egg smell? A lot of people use chlorine and frankly chlorine is probably the worst method of treating sulfur water that there is. Simply because chlorine is a good disinfectant but it's not a good oxidizer. And to remove hydrogen sulfide, you need a good oxidizer. So scratch chlorine off the list. If you're using chlorine, forget it. it believe me, I've been doing this for over 45 years. I just look young. Okay, that's a joke. Do not use chlorine to remove sulfur. Chlorine is very problematic and requires a contact tank, huge contact time. Don't do it. Run. Ozone is another way, and we've got some people that are combining ozone with backwashing filters that use air and inject some ozone. Frankly, it's a gimmick, in my opinion. It doesn't remove very much sulfur, and it's also problematic because you've got an ozone generator. Uh, you've got technology that involves introducing ozone into that tank. Ozone can be very corrosive in and of itself. Uh, also, air injection systems, they, they use a water softener valve, but they don't have a brine tank, and so they just suck air in and you've got a head of air inside that tank. If you have very small amounts of sulfur, and I mean very small amounts of sulfur, it can work for a while, but to us it's problematic. Um, some people use iron filters with manganese green sand or green sand plus, and they regenerate with potassium permanganate. Again, not a good oxidizer in this particular application for sulfur. I would stay away from, from iron filters. Now, I'm moving toward a technology that I'm going to tell you about, and, and I'm very partial to this technology. There's a couple of reasons I'm very partial to this technology. And that is, we were one of the pioneers into this technology over 20 years ago, and we've used it in thousands of applications since then. And if it doesn't work, if you buy one of these systems and it doesn't work, you will be the first. 
in the history of U.S. water while we've been selling these systems. They always work, and that system is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Two molecules of hydrogen, two molecules of oxygen. By the way, water is H2O, so it's got a lot of the same molecules that water consists of, only it's, it's got an extra molecule um, of, of oxygen. How does it work? It, very simply, we have an injection system that injects hydrogen peroxide proportionally. In other words, it's going to inject the precise amount at one gallon a minute or at 15 gallons a minute. It's going to, because at one gallon a minute, obviously, you don't need nearly as much hydrogen peroxide to oxidize sulfur. And by the way, it oxidizes iron and manganese as well. At 15 gallons a minute, you're obviously going to need more hydrogen peroxide. And so we inject this in right ahead of a catalytic carbon filter. The catalytic carbon filter has media inside that is specially manufactured catalytic carbon. It's made in a special way. It doesn't leach anything. It's NSF certified and all that. But it acts as a catalyst between the sulfur and the hydrogen peroxide. It oxidizes that iron, sulfur, and manganese instantly right on the surface of the catalytic carbon and causes it to precipitate out into a solid where the catalytic carbon filters it out. And I don't care what level of sulfur you have, it's gone. Zero, zilch, gone, eradicated, no sulfur, period. And you're going to end up with the best water you've ever had. Now, sometimes people, I'm going to tell you a story. Over 20 years ago, I, I met with a couple that had just built a house. And they wanted a chlorination system. And this was a very large house. It was, a, it was over a half million dollar home. It was a very nice house. And I said, you need a hydrogen peroxide system. And they said, we don't want a hydrogen peroxide system. We want an ozone system. And so they bought that ozone system. And within 18 months, they called us and they said, we're popping pinholes in our copper and it's not getting rid of the sulfur smell. What can you do? We're going to take the ozone system out. We want to put a chlorination system in. I said, the chlorination system's not going to work. So they put the chlorination system in and sure enough, it didn't work. And it was less than a year later that they called us back and they said, we need to make sure this thing's going to work. And I said, look, I've been telling you every time that you need a hydrogen peroxide system. And the husband was just dead set against hydrogen peroxide. He said, I don't want a hydrogen peroxide system. And I said, why? It doesn't require contact time. It's not going to, I mean, there's no downside to hydrogen peroxide. It's the elements of water. It's H2O2. The catalytic carbon takes it all out, but it reverts back to water. There's no, it doesn't make any disinfection byproducts like chlorine does. Chlorine forms trihalomethanes, which are deadly carcinogens. You don't get that with hydrogen peroxide. I don't want hydrogen peroxide. The next day, the wife called me and said, are you sure this is going to work? And I said, yes. She said, well, here's my husband's credit card number. You better make sure it works. We put this in right before Thanksgiving. The, the family put it in right before Thanksgiving. And on Thanksgiving Day, I got a call and said, thank you. We've been in this house four years, and this is the first Thanksgiving that our water hasn't stank. We run into that all the time. We run into one part per million of sulfur to 50 parts per million of sulfur. I think the highest we've treated has been 64 parts per million of sulfur. And we've been successful every single time. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I do have to tell you that there is one drawback to hydrogen peroxide. And that drawback is that you typically have an annual peroxide bill, which averages two to four hundred dollars a year. There's that. But that's a small price to pay. I know people that pay that much for their cable bill a month. This is your water and that's a small price to pay to have clean, non-stinking water that has no iron, no sulfur, no manganese. It's easy to fix. There's not a downside to hydrogen peroxide. It works every time and if 
it almost sounds like hyperbole when I say that, but it's true. Uh, we've been using it well over 20 years and are still amazed at the results we, we achieve every day. If you're not sure how to apply this in your application, call one of our master water specialists or certified water specialists and we'd be glad to help you get rid of your stinky water once and for all time. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.